Before we get started on today's show, I want to make mention of a problem that we're having on the channel, which is uh, scammers and scam artists impersonating me as uh, Digital Asset News and putting these different goofy things in the comments. So if you ever see something like this, uh, write my manager uh, and then, you know, I'm going to take you to a, a, a WhatsApp number and you can get all this great information. I don't do that. I don't do anything like, like that. I don't do anything with like uh, leveraged crazy trading or I'm not going to ask you for your, your private key or something goofy like that. So uh, just be aware of things that are going on in the comment section. And if you see this, please notify me as uh, everybody has been notifying me of what happened from yesterday or actually a couple days uh, ago the video. And this was just another example and it was on every single comment. I don't know what kind of bot does that, but it was in every single one. It was so annoying. It took me a long time to get rid of all these things. I actually had to go through YouTube and report everything and actually talk to a specific person at YouTube about this because uh, they can't keep doing this. Anyhow, so if this happens, uh, just know to uh, notify me, uh, downvote, and uh, just pretty much just let me know because this has to stop. And that's it. Let's break into today's, uh, today's show. Welcome to Digital Asset News, like the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. So today, we've got some interesting stuff on top of the great price actions going on with Bitcoin. There was a fantastic interview uh, by Stansberry Research. It was by the host, Daniela Cambone, and, and the next gold bug, E.B. Tucker. And we're going to talk about the truths and falsehoods being laid bare by these gold aficionados. Also, Bitcoin price action reminiscent of 2015 before the historic 100x bull cycle began, according to an institutional crypto report. And to me, you can say 2015 or 2016, it's all the same. We know where these are going to go and we're going to see fireworks very soon. And we're going to do an update of yesterday's video. We're going to have a little bit more information about what the uh, banks are foaming in. And it's going to prove my point that the banks are antiquated and they're going to get blockbuster. And finally, real quick, Charles Hoskinson turns 33. So if you're on the uh, Twitter account or on YouTube, wish him a happy birthday. Look at that young kid. Look at that guy. So we're getting all that. But first, take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is November 5th. And as I uh, was guessing or predicted, whatever you want to say, uh, we have no president uh, yet in the United States of America. And I don't think it's going to happen today because we're going to go through a lot of turmoil and a lot of different court uh, rulings. So we'll see. But uh, hey, you know what's great for um, instability? Cryptocurrency digital assets. So Bitcoin, man, what a day. It really rocketed up. I haven't seen Bitcoin do this since 2017. And uh, we're almost, I think it actually broke 15K at one point, but we're sitting at 14.942. It is uh, 1 p.m. right now, Texas time, and it's up 6% in a day. That's amazing. 12.5% in seven days. Ethereum's also up, and it, you know, it's well above the 400 mark. Well, 410. I mean, it's above that. I'm pretty happy. 2.3 in 24 hours and 60, 5.6 in seven days. So I like that. Tether's still the same amount of uh, market cap. Uh, XRP is almost pegged the quarter. <laughs> almost pegged the quarter at 24 cents. Bitcoin Cash up 3.1. Let's see what's down actually, or who's really massive. Oh, hey, Litecoin 6.6, .6, probably because of that uh, PayPal boost. As you know, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum. Now Litecoin uh, is going to be uh, offered by PayPal. So we'll see how that works out. I think it's going to be huge just between me and you. Stellar's up 5%. That's pretty good. A little price action there. 6% for OKB, 2.8 for NEM, 2.9 for Hobie. Eh, whatever. And oh, the big ones that I've been dollar cost averaging into, thankfully, Theta Network at almost 7%. I'd love to see that. Anything below a dollar, so says Digital Dave, is uh, a steal. That's debatable, but I do see some firework action. And uh, Celsius, ah, Celsius. Why do you have to go so high when I'm really putting a lot into my dollar cost averaging? Oh, well, I shouldn't uh, look a gift horse in the mouth. And, uh, oh, hey, hey, look at this, 13% for Uniswap. So congratulations to all you Uniswap holders. You know, it was at $4 at one point, just saying. And that's the big stuff. Synthetics, uh, as far as DeFi, uh, up 14%. That looks like a pretty good one. Ave, thankfully, 13%. Need to get Yanni in here to talk about his project. I really do. All right, so that's what's going on. Let's uh, break into today's top story. So first up, this is a good one. If you don't know E.B. Tucker, he's like Peter Schiff, too. Uh, but he's just more mellow and uh, a lot more sensible. And actually, eb has got a lot, of, a lot of good points. Before we start, I'm just going to say this. Um, the host, Daniela Cam Cambone and E.B. Tucker, I like both of them. Uh, I think they're level-headed and they're pretty smart people. But you have to understand, of course, why 
why do I talk about cryptocurrency digital assets? It's because I'm biased and I own those. So, and you're going to hear, hear me talk about the same type of things over and over again because I own them because I am biased. Um, the same type of thing is going to be uh, Michael Saylor from MicroStrategy. He's going to talk about Bitcoin all day long. The same thing is going to be about anybody who owns these things. I mean, we try not to be biased, but let's just be honest. We're all biased. So I'm going to, you know, unveil that cover. That's not really a secret. I don't know why people, you know, don't want to admit it, but it is true. But EB here, he wrote a book, Why Gold, Why Now? You can see it right in the background. And of course, he has to push his narrative, but he's not as crazy as Peter Schiff, where Peter Schiff's like, nope, Bitcoin's dumb. Bitcoin's stupid. Never going to go anywhere. That makes no sense to me. Uh, to me, I feel like, why fight? Just join us. You, you know where everything's going. Um, I think everybody should own gold, silver, Bitcoin. That's it. Why not hedge your bet? You know, I don't I don't see the, the whole difference here. So uh, that's what I'll say about that. And uh, when I first started this interview, I'm like, wow, we're going to get somebody who's, uh, you know, might be uh, flipping sides. Uh, we'll take a look. But uh, this all starts off with a question from Danielle. So let's jump right in. I know your heart lies with gold. But if I were to give you $100,000 today, where do you invest? Gold, silver, or Bitcoin? Explain, E.B. Tucker. Well, you mean you think my heart lies with gold, but what you don't know is I'm kind of a mercenary of sorts. I mean... Wow, right there, I'm like, oh, this is going to be fantastic because, you know, E.B. here is talking about like, hey, hey, wait, you know, I'm big in gold and silver, but uh, just back it up because uh, guess what? I'm a mercenary. I'm a... Loose cannon, and I might actually go for Bitcoin. So I'm like, this is great. You know, finally, another another convert who sees the light. Well, let's keep rolling. And, uh, gold is in a secular bull market. So what that means is when something's in a secular bull market, you don't really try to get involved in these ups and downs of small corrections. You know, you want to find things that are in a secular bull market. Let me give you an example. Um, when tech stocks started rallying a decade ago, should you have said after a year, well, I don't know, they don't look so, you know, like maybe maybe the most is gone from them. Maybe I'll pull my money out. No, you were in a secular rally and you just sit tight and you be right, sit tight is what they say, right? So we look at gold today. We were going into, you know, earlier in the week, the election, the uncertainty. We had gold gyrating and what was happening is they'd say, maybe Biden's going to win. Oh, okay, more stimulus. Well, maybe Trump's going to win. Oh, okay. No stimulus. You got to be kidding me. The, the real people on this market, the real people that know how to position, were saying it doesn't matter. Well, that last part is correct. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what's going to happen. We know inevitably what's going to happen is that the stock market is going to go way down. Could be a little dip, could be a big dip. I think it's going to be a big dip. And we're going to see uh, a massive influx into store of values and also into different types of asset classes, such as cryptocurrencies and digital assets. And don't just take my word for it. There's a little quick article from CNBC, and it talks about how Jeff Bezos, the richest man on the planet, yeah, just sold about $3 billion worth of Amazon shares. Now, those are his shares. And I will just say, if you're part of the company, you know kind of where things are going, and you've got a lot of probably some high priced accountants and analysts around you they're probably telling them look there's some bad things coming on the horizon we should probably take some money out and take our profits and then let the market go to where it's going to go which is way down and this was a pretty smart move for jeff bezos so uh you see something like that on top of a lot of different economists who are talking all over different rackets who are saying stocks are going to go down bonds are going to go down and you probably want to put uh, some of your gains into cash. Cash. So, I mean, sure. So, anyhow, to get back to EB, I mean, the whole thing is the last part he said was totally correct. But did you see how when he first started this, this whole type of scenario, it was kind of like a politician where they kind of have to backtrack a little bit and kind of put in some more flair into the actual answer. And he really doesn't answer it too, too much, but he's getting to that point, which is going to be, hey, uh, I got a book <laughs> and it lays everything out. And that's why you got to buy it. So here's what I'm talking about lay out these events are coming in sequence so if you read the book you know you're not surprised by this you know you're going to have these things start happening like dominoes and you're going to have mmt you're going to pay people not to work you're going to have negative interest rates you're going to have a digital currency we lay all this out and it's all happening right in front of our very eyes the question is will you prepare or will you not prepare because people that do 
see this coming and they're ready and many people don't and they're just confused with every single headline. Mm. So here's the thing about that. I've been hearing this same thing from gold bugs, especially from Peter Schiff. If you search Peter Schiff end of the world or Peter Schiff economy crashing, you will see a video of him from 2019, 18, 70, 60, 50, all the way back to like 2009 or 2010. It's just, it's like, the, this is the year. It's going to, it's going to totally collapse and everything else. It's the same thing that I've been hearing about from gold bugs since the beginning of time. And I get it. I mean, look, it could actually collapse. It could. I mean, let's see what, what's going on all throughout the, the global economy. I can see that, but it's always the same thing with people who are selling something, right? They're going to tell you about how awful it is. They're going to tell you about the fear and they're going to have you want to buy uh, whatever the product it is. It's just a, a basic uh, marketing ploy. I got nothing against DB. Actually, he's a great marketer and he knows a lot about gold and he knows a lot about prices, price action, everything else. And um, I tip my hat to him, but I'm just breaking this down because I'm like, I just see the same thing over and over and over again. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I'm not poo-pooing all over gold. Again, I think everybody should own gold, silver, Bitcoin, but you know, come on. So the next part really gets a little wonky because he starts to talk about gold and how it's gonna go, it's gonna skyrocket massively and how Bitcoin isn't really that big of a deal. I feel like gold's heading higher to $2,500 by the end of the year, okay? We'll come back on in the beginning of the year and give you a forecast for next year because we'll, we'll know more as things sort out. You know, there's a lot of uncertainty in what will everything look like. So gold is going to skyrocket up to $2,500. So right now, I think it's like 1900 18 something or rather like that. So wow, it's really going to skyrocket. I got you. So then EB really breaks it down and he talks about how gold is far superior. Well, it has more of a market cap, I will, I will say, uh, than Bitcoin. And he's you know, talking about how small uh, the actual uh, cryptocurrency market is. But he says something interesting, and it made me actually want to buy his book. Bitcoin before and how, okay, if we take silver out of the equation, but I have a chart that shows Bitcoin, gold, silver from the start of the year. So I know I'm going to get those those emails from those crypto folks saying, well, yeah. you know, how, how, how do you pick gold over Bitcoin? Okay, so... Think about this. With Bitcoin, you've got a $300 billion market cap, which assumes about 14,000. And then let's just say, you know, 21 million in Bitcoin. There's debates over how much of that Bitcoin is tradable. And, you know, there's all this stuff here and there. But it's about 1 uh, 40th the, the size of the of the gold market, you know, which is $12 trillion. And so you can say from one side of the coin, you can say this is a this is a serious opportunity mm -hmm. for, for us to see parity you know, in the, in this asset class, but it's all, how are you going to play it? You know, are you going to buy a bunch of Bitcoin and hope that it goes up 40 times to meet the value of gold? That's making a lot of very serious assumptions that, that I'm not sure I'm ready to make. Whereas right. with gold, I'm looking at thousand percent gains in, in the value of gold royalties when gold went up 50%. I mean, think about that. So, I mean, it, so let's break that down. He said when it when gold went up, he made a thousand percent on gold royalties. So just so you know, a gold royalty is a contract that gives the owner the right to a percentage of gold production or revenue in exchange for an upfront payment. Gold royalty companies use these contracts as a way to finance mining companies in need of capital. So I heard you be talking about that. I'm like, well, I don't really have a great understanding of what that is. I should probably look into it as an investor. So again, like I've always said, gold, silver, Bitcoin sounds good. Now we're hearing about this, kind of interesting. But let's not let him get off the hook just that fast, huh? Because here he is saying, hey, you know what? You know, the Bitcoin market's only 300 billion. And then, you know, the almighty gold is at 12 trillion. So do you really think it's going to go on parity to gold? First of all, no. <laughs> I don't think it's going to go to 12 trillion overnight. I don't think it's going to be on parity with gold. I think it might actually pass gold, but maybe not. Let's say it doesn't. Let's say it only gets to 25% of gold value. Just 25%. Okay, so that's around two and a half, three trillion dollars. Do you know the cost or what a one Bitcoin would be if it hit three trillion dollars? Well, I don't know either. So <laughs> let's let's break out the market cap calculator. So let's see. The circulating supply is 19 million. It's market cap. Okay, three trillion. So let's say 250,000. Oh, that's uh, 4.7 trillion. That's that's not going to happen. How about 200,000? Let's say 150,000. Actually, it's going to be about 160,000. About 3 trillion. Okay, so on this channel, 
I've always said that uh, I don't believe that Bitcoin, one Bitcoin will reach a million or three million. I just don't. I just, maybe I can't fathom it, right? And then maybe a 500K Bitcoin, but I said a very conservative number would be about 150,000. And uh, here we are. Uh, that's about it. So yeah, if we just get just gold's market cap, we're not talking about everything else that, that Bitcoin could be. That's just gold. So if we just look at that, yeah, I think we could do okay. So look, again, I know why EB is saying the things that he, that he says. He's got to sell a book, and that's just really what it comes down to. And then lastly, I'm going to finish up with this. And this is all about, again, dog whistle, fear, downplay uh, about what Bitcoin could be uh, as, a pair, as compared to gold and uh, precious metals. I think, you know, when, I, when I'm speaking to people, they think that they'll get richer quicker from Bitcoin. Whereas look how long it took us to get to $2,000 gold. Yeah. Well, okay. Now the volatility is different. Yeah. Right. But that's yeah, because the you don't have much time, right? Like, I mean, I need to be rich by next week. I mean, I don't have any time for, you know, the old fashioned way my granddad taught me was to get rich was to spend less than you earn and invest the difference wisely. That's out the window. You know, we, we need something like in the next couple of weeks where we can retire. I mean, that's the mentality <laughs> of the average it you is. Know, Robin Hood trader, it right? I mean, but, but as we know, that's also the type of mentality that usually ends in tears. Okay. But they'll find that out on their own. So the, the reality is that, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's I, I think it's it's totally sensible right now to have a Bitcoin position. But the question is, when you say I don't have enough time. OK, when we started Metallo less than four years ago, it was a dollar 20 a share Canadian and it was over 13 dollars in, in August. OK, that's over 1000 percent gain. Now, that's less than four years. Now, I, I don't know what these other people are investing in, but I haven't found many scenarios where things like that happen in the investment world. I mean, okay, okay you might have bought some Neo coin or something for eight cents and then it ran up to some huge number. I, I get it. That could happen every now and then. But would you really have put a million dollars into that? I mean, you would have been insane to, 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 to bet that way. Not and, and I could say the same for right. some gold mining stocks. So here's the thing. There are principles that we all must follow. And when people talk about, you know, the get rich quick type of schemes and uh, just dumping a bunch of money, sure, I get it. And no, we shouldn't do those types of things. That does not make any sense. And that's one of the things that I preach on the channel uh, about, you know, chasing the shiny objects and uh, dumping all your money into one project because that's, that's foolhardy. That's a fool's errand. But however, if we take a look at, if we just take a look at how there is disruption technology, we can go all the way back to the Industrial Revolution to mechanics, to factories, to automation, and how it changed the whole world. Then we can fast forward all the way to the internet, which was, you know, mid 90s, late 90s, and how that changed the world. And if you take a look at what's gonna change the world next around, there's two things in my mind. One is, is uh, cryptocurrency and digital assets. And the second thing is AI. So if you can invest in one of those two things, you're probably gonna do pretty well. And it's not gonna take a lot of time because there is so much profits to be made and there's so much innovation to be done that these are the things that these guys don't, I don't think they really get it. They don't really get it right now because they look at it like this is a get rich quick thing. No, it's not a get rich quick thing. What it really is, is how it's gonna change the entire world. And when you have something that can change the entire world for different things that, that crypto and digital assets can do, then there's a lot of money to follow. Uh, again, uh, I could be wrong, but let me know what you think in the comments section. But this type of thinking right here, when the average investor or and somebody who's looking into it will hear this type of uh, interview, it's it kind of puts them off. And it's where you come in and you have to be that educator and you have to be the person like, no, 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 it's not like that. This isn't like a get rich quick type of thing. You can dollar cost average. It's going to change the world. There's a different way of thinking. A lot of these projects, yes, they will go to zero. So invest into the right ones. And that's what we try to give here uh, on this channel. All right, let's go on to the next story. So next up, Bitcoin price action, reminiscent of 2015. Uh, this is exactly what I've been saying. Actually, I, I kind of feel like it's 2016, but uh, we'll see. Anyhow, Bitcoin may be breaking free from its correlation with the stock market and gearing up for a parabolic, I like that word, 2020, according to a new report from Bloomberg. And they state, Bitcoin may undergo a parabolic 2021 as it did in 2013 and 2017. It previous patterns play out again. New highs are a next potential iteration for the firstborn crypto and may be only a matter of time unless something we don't foresee trips up the trend of greater adoption and demand Versus constraint of supply. So look, 
there's only so much Bitcoin that can go around. There's only so much Ethereum. I know it's a little bit of elastic uh, Ethereum is, but sure. And a lot of these projects, they have a pretty reasonable market cap or, or circulating supply or max supply. So uh, everything has a finite supply as opposed to precious metals and gold and silver. I don't care what you say. We still find uh, different mines. We still find different veins of gold. So what are you going to do? Favorable macroeconomics akin to those booing gold support the digital store of value, notably versus the oversupplied broader crypto, broader crypto market. Bitcoin may be in the early days of ending its constraining relationship with the NASDAQ 100 stock index in our view. Technically, the Bitcoin and NASDAQ ratio is near 1.2. On October 27th, had it extended above 1.1 resistance. That's been about a year. So just so you know, uh, the, high, the lower the number, the uh, less there is an actual tying of uh, Bitcoin uh, to the traditional markets like the S&P 500 and, and NASDAQ and things like that. So we don't want it to be tied to it. But unfortunately, as the traditional market uh, sees all the different profits that can happen in crypto, they tend to come over to our space because guess what's liquid 24-7, 365? Crypto and digital assets, which is a big problem. To finish up, the report states that uh, Bitcoin's resistance at 10,000 may morph into resistance at 20 grand next year. And this only makes sense. We have heard about the, the $10,000 resistance. And once we got above that, everybody's pretty happy. And that kind of teeter totters around there for a little bit. And then it goes to 11. Then it goes to 12. And here we are uh, around 14,000. And as I understand it from a lot of TA people have told me that once you get past 14,000 and stay above 14 for a little bit of time, there's no resistance until 20. So once we hit that, then it's just that is not the resistance anymore. That is a level of support, as they say. So again, let me know what you think. But I think that uh, we are setting ourselves up for a massive 2021. And part of the reason is because of a story we did yesterday. So this is just a quick follow-up to the story we did. It was about Bank FOMO, and it was from uh, Unchained or Laura Shin's uh, podcast. Laura had two ladies on, uh, Meltem Demirez, Chief Strategy Officer at CoinShares, and Lynn Alden. She's the founder of the Lynn Alden Investment Strategy Group. And they had a couple of great stories because they uh, give advice and strategies to different banks. And a couple of the stories they talked about was about how these, these banking execs are starting to ask about mostly Bitcoin. And, you know, they, they go in there and they tell them everything that's going on they're like hey that's great but uh, tell us about bitcoin and how we can stay relevant which is pretty interesting and i talked about this in, you know, yesterday and i said they're not going to stay relevant uh they're going to they're not going to go away completely but they're going to decrease their foothold in the financial ecosphere and it's part of the reason is because they can't innovate they can't innovate they can't move on they've been doing the same thing for so long and this is the kind of thing i'm talking about this is actually from a subscriber i just forgot to mention it i thought it was uh, pretty interesting he says hey dan loyal subscriber thanks my man he says i had to tell you this because i found it ridiculous I went to wire some money from my U.S. bank account to my newly created Kraken so I can purchase some digital currency. The wiring process with U.S. bank is antiquated and frustrating to say the least. It requires an appointment. <laughs> it requires an appointment where you have to meet with a bank or you have to sit down with the bank and go, this is what's going on. The questions were straightforward. Now, I don't know if you have to physically do it or if you have to just do it over the phone. Until they asked me, what is the purpose of the wire? To which I answered, for an investment. They responded with, I'm sorry, that's too broad. We need more specific information. So I responded with, it's for digital currency. The bank branch manager then proceeded to tell me that the wire may get rejected because U.S. Bank does not permit wires to be sent for the purpose of digital currencies because they are too risky. It leaves me with some rhetorical questions. <laughs> rhetorical. How the heck is my bank allowed to tell me what I can and can't do with my money? When I'm in a Vegas casino about to blow 50 bucks on red, why does my debit card work at an ATM? But that very same bank won't allow me to buy the best performing asset of the last 10 years. This man has definitely been watching my channel. Do they honestly know this or is this their way of bolstering their job for as long as possible? And here's the thing. Uh, I have no idea. I have no idea what they do the things they do. Maybe... If you were buying or transferring a ton of money, like let's say you were transferring $100,000, they'd be like, hey, wait, what's going on? Also, because it's new, you know, over $10,000, things get suspicious with banks. It's just how it is. So I don't know how much you're, you're putting over, but it would not surprise me if uh, it wasn't that much. And they were like, no, you can't do it because that's the problem with banks. They're just not. They're just not prone to innovation. They're not prone to like be able to pivot because they're just so bloated and top heavy uh, with middle management and upper management. And it's the same thing with big corporations. That's why uh, the startups beat the, the tar out of them because uh, they're able to, to move and pivot and do these things that big businesses frankly just cannot do. 
And uh, banks are like one of those ones that have been uh, around forever and uh, they have a big problem. Now, I'm not saying that the people that work in the banks are bad people. I mean, a lot of a lot of people are on my channel that work in the banks. Hello, thanks for stopping by. And it's not about you guys. It's it's just about you know the upper management that just can't do the things they're supposed to do, and uh, to really meet the needs of the customer. And that's why digital assets will win. Anyhow, so that's it for today. And also, just so you know, uh, the website is almost ready to launch. Uh, it's got uh, it's gonna have a lot of great information. It's gonna go through everything from like the basics to safety to investing uh, it should be uh, pretty great it's gonna be very easy and simplified just like this uh, my YouTube channel is supposed to be and uh, hopefully I get it all done by <laughs> by the end of this week it was gonna last week but you know how that goes and uh, of course the greatest thing is that it will be hundred percent free so hey everybody likes free anyhow that's it for today so thanks for stopping by I really appreciate it if you like types of videos me two minutes gonna pop up on your left and right not for sure because uh, YouTube controls that. And uh, that's it. So thanks again. See you on the next one.